Hey everybody, I'm Stephanie Quayle. Join me in Yellowstone Country as I take you to some of my favorite places here in Montana. You wanna go? On this wild frontier, if you get too far, follow the North Star. Where you're lost, it's gonna lead you back to my arms. Keep your eyes on my horizon. Before we continue to explore some of my favorite places in Yellowstone Country, as well as some new ones too, I have to encourage everyone to go for a horseback ride at some point during your visit to this wild frontier. Horses have been a part of my life since I was a little kid, so there's nothing better than sharing that with all my friends that come visit Yellowstone Country. You can always find an amazing outfitter to take you on a horseback ride, a trail ride. There's so much to see from the back of a horse. Our first stop is a local secret, and we're gonna let you in on it. We're at one of my favorite places for a Sunday brunch here at Pine Creek Lodge. Live music, amazing food, amazing people, and just look at this. It's perfect. This place knows how to brunch on the weekends. Their signature burger is incredible. They know how to taco, and I can't help but love how each dish's name is music-related, like the Benny and the Jets Eggs Benedict. It's a place where all us locals go, as well as a great place for visitors to come check out. All right, belly's full. Next up is one of the coolest music venues right here in the heart of Paradise Valley. We are here turning on Trail Creek to Music Ranch, Montana. Montana has become such a destination for artists, songwriters, musicians. This is a perfect example why. We get to sing to the audience and get to look up at our beautiful Rockies. It's just unlike any other place. If you missed it, we did a live stream performance on Yellowstone Country's Facebook page from right here at the Music Ranch. I saw the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band right on that stage. I got to bring my dad. It was epic. If you can't find happiness here, you're probably have to leave. We're about to go see a movie premiere of a movie that was actually made right here in Paradise Valley. We're gonna see it at the Empire Theater, which is the only movie theater in Livingston. And this place is just so cool. I think what's so special too about Montana is the arts have grown so much. There's so much talent here. Yeah, we're at the Empire Theater in Livingston and uh, it's been here forever. Growing up here, to think we're about to see a movie premiere made right here in Livingston, Absolutely. right here in Immigrant, Yes. Paradise Valley. Yes. How does this feel for you being a hometown kid? You know, terrific. Probably more nervous tonight sure. than we were in Hollywood, because yeah. we didn't know that many people there. As a singer, songwriter, musician, and entertainer, I am so proud of all the arts that are coming out of Montana. And I want to share with you where it all began for this kid. My absolute favorite shop on Main Street in Bozeman, Montana is Music Villa. I would go into this place all the time growing up, watch all the musicians play the guitars and the instruments. My dear friend Paul owns the shop and we're gonna go just talk to him and catch up because music has come so far in our community from where it was when we grew up. So let's go check out Music Villa. When did your dad open Music Villa down on Maine? He bought it from another couple who bought it from their parents. Really? Yeah, so it's been around since the 70s. It's one of those things like kids today need to come in and, I don't know, we, when we were kids, we hung out in these places. I mean, and it's, I practically uh, sat on the floor. I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were here, yeah. yeah I mean, but today it's a different world. People really, kids shop online and all that, but this place is, still has that kind of magic where yeah. people actually still come here and hang out and it's just, a, it's a great, we've opened it up to be a great hang and we feel like we've helped, you know, grow the music scene here. We really try to be like, whatever someone's gonna need, right. hopefully we're gonna have it. The fact that you guys do lessons and you're really growing yeah. artists as well and musicians so that they have a place to go. Oh. And where to start. Yeah. When I think about how many musicians have come in and out of Music Villa and been able to share their music across the world, it's really, really special. I'm really excited to head down to the Shally Market down in Belgrade off Jackrabbit. I've been hearing about it. I've seen their products at the different parks, but I've, I've not been in this little shop. Gwen and Mark, they do everything inside the shop and they serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So let's go check it out.
Gwen, I love this little market, Chalet Market. How long have you been here? Thank you. We have been here since 1977. Yeah, it's great. It's just a part of Belgrade. We, my husband and I purchased the market about 10 years ago. Okay. So we haven't really done anything. Got it. Yeah. So this is, this is as it was yes. from back in the day. For anyone coming into town, this is a must stop because not only do you have your incredible sausages that he makes, but also so much deliciousness. I'm looking around this place just going, oh man. We manufacture, we're a USDA meat plant and we make all of our meat products, but then we buy tons and tons of products. We do um, snack sticks, jerky, summer sausages, and then we make lots of fresh sausage, bratwurst, things like that. And we make all our deli meats. We are a, a hub of everything Montana. So Montana-made products is what we excel in. In Yellowstone Park, we're at all the Yellowstone General Stores and in Glacier Park too, around the park and on top of Logan Pass. It's amazing. Yeah. And when you're coming through Belgrade, you can stop right here, get your goodies yeah. to go. You can come at 6.30 in the morning. You're open, open at 6.30? Breakfast. That's amazing. Yeah, and we stay open until 6.30 at night. So it's you incredible. can get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We got you covered. Everything. I'll have all three. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And with all the different products, are you able to order online or is it pure destination? You have to come to get... It's it. online. I send gift boxes out to almost every state in the country. So anyone who's watching this that isn't here physically, they can get yes. a little piece of the action. Chilemarket.com. That's, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> Sacagawea Hotel, this place is so beautiful. So we're gonna go meet up with Kay. She's gonna give us a little tour. We're gonna get some of the uh, stories, because there's always stories when there's a place like this. The Sacagawea Hotel was built in 1910, and we have done our best, as it's changed hands in 2009, to its current owners, the Folkford family, to preserve that rich 1900s history. So you're in one of our two bars. Okay. This is Pompeii's Grill, and this is our fine dining restaurant. We have a five-star dining experience here. We do our best to deliver local products. A lot of the time, our patrons will come and grab a drink here at the bar, yeah. and before their dinner reservations, because um, we do get busy. A lot of people want to come eat at Pompeii's Grill. This hotel was built with the intention of housing the Milwaukee Railroad employees and also the patrons from really? the Milwaukee Railroad, yes. And John Quincy Adams, John Q. Adams, was the purchasing agent for the Milwaukee. He decided that there needed to be a central hub because it was a major train right. station in Three right. Forks back right. then. They purchased the old Three Forks Hotel that was built in 1863 and then they decided to move it over here by horse and, <laughs> and wagon, buggy, right. yeah. basically on big rolling log timbers and move it. John Quincy Adams is sitting here looking at his watch, waiting for when the Three Forks Hotel was going to be delivered right. so that he could build on to that, and that was his goal. And so he hired Fred Wilson, a designer, to come and to build around that old Three Forks Hotel. It's a year-round, yeah, functioning yeah. gathering place is what I like yeah, to call it. Absolutely. It is the gathering place here in Three Forks. Walk through those doors and it's just peace and calm and tranquility. And I see more people, yeah. they get here, they leave all their worries aside, slow down, walk through those doors and just experience all that is the Sacagawea. If you're looking for a unique place to stay, check out the Sacagawea Hotel. So much history, such a part of Yellowstone country. Thank you for joining me on another adventure through Montana's Yellowstone country. See you real soon.